Good afternoon, everyone. Um, good afternoon in Los Angeles, I believe, but probably good evening on the East Coast. I uh, just want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our wonderful presentation from the Handshake Crew. I know that um, if you were here earlier uh, in the morning, you heard a lot of conversations about connecting students directly with um, careers in public interest technology. And so they are here to talk about a tool that many of you are quite used to because um, I know a number of you use Handshake. And so um, please welcome the team from Handshake, Britt and Chelsea. Thank you so much, Andreen, um, and happy Thursday to everybody. Thank you so much for having us today. My name is Britt Gergen. I'm a product marketing manager at Handshake. And um, as Andreen mentioned, I'm here with my colleague Chelsea to talk to you all about how you can use Handshake to foster engagement around pit opportunities. So we jump to the next slide. Do we have our slides? Perfect, so we can go to the next one. That's me on the left. Again, my name is Britt. I'm a product marketing manager. And um, that's my colleague, Chelsea, on the right. Chelsea, do you want to say hello? Hello. I'm a relationship manager, and I work with universities. Awesome. So we can go on to the next slide. So here's what we're going to cover today. We'll start with an overview of Handshake as a platform, what it is, who it serves. And then we'll talk about the different ways that Handshake can be used to connect interested students with pit opportunities. So how you might use Handshake um, in this particular context. After that, we'll wrap up with a few action items for you all to think about, basically next steps that you can take to start uh, taking advantage of Handshake. And then we'll do uh, an open Q&A. Now, please feel free to submit any questions through the chat throughout the presentation. Um, we'll be aggregating them and we'll cover them at the end. So we won't be answering any during the presentation, but I promise we will get to them at the end. Awesome. So let's start by talking about Handshake more broadly. And I'm going to hand it over to Chelsea to take us through this section. Wonderful. Thanks, Britt. All right. So what is Handshake? Handshake is the number one way college students can find jobs. We are an early career platform where universities, employers, and students connect. Handshake's mission is to democratize opportunity, and this stemmed from the experiences our founders had while in college. So as college students, our founders realized that finding a job is difficult, and trying to find a job coming from the middle of Michigan is extremely difficult, even though they're extremely qualified. They started traveling throughout the country and learned that this was a problem occurring for millions of students nationwide. They discovered talent is distributed evenly, but opportunity is not. So Handshake was founded to ensure all students have the chance to find their perfect job. Next. So before Handshake, if employers wanted to connect with universities and students, they would need to log in separately to multiple systems. It was a long and tedious process that only reached a fraction of students that were qualified. With Handshake, employers have access to our network of universities from one central point, allowing them to connect with countless students that they wouldn't have been able to reach prior. Next. So to talk a little bit about what Handshake does, Handshake provides for the seamless collaboration between universities, employers, and students to ensure all students can find that perfect opportunity for them. So Career Services sits at the center of this and all of the operations for Handshake. They approve employers and curate jobs for students to choose from. They facilitate events and appointments and use data to better support students in their outcomes. Employers use Handshake to connect with universities so they can find qualified students and engage with them. They can post jobs, hold interviews, and both host and participate in events. Students are able to explore new employers and new job postings. They can interact with interested recruiters. They can learn from their peers and they can attend events and career fairs. So we're excited to tell you a little bit about how Handshake can help you in bringing public interest technology roles to your interested students. Next. So I'll throw it over Great. to Britt. Thanks, Sophie. So yeah, let's dive deeper into specific Handshake features and talk about how you can find and promote pit opportunities to a relevant student audience. So first I wanna to talk to you about data in Handshake. So Handshake contains a lot of relevant information that you can use to identify students that would be a good fit for pit jobs. And we can break the data down into three distinct groups. First, there's institutional data. 
So when implementing Handshake, just about every school imports a set of data from your student information system to pre-create student accounts. This data typically includes things like student majors, school years, um, and other types of institutional information. Now, by uploading this information in advance, this means that when a student logs into Handshake for the first time, their profile is already partially filled out for them. In fact, they are claiming an existing account rather than creating a brand new one. Um, and this means that it's a lot easier to get started on Handshake because your school has done some of the work for you. Now, the imported data remains private to the student and their career center until the student logs in and decides whether or not they want to make it public. Next, when using Handshake, students can share information about their career interests with our platform. And this helps Handshake make better job recommendations over time. It's also accessible to career services career services administrators, so you can see what industries and types of jobs students have said that they're interested in. And then finally, Handshake also allows you to visualize what actions students are taking in the platform. So this includes things like which jobs they've applied to, events they've attended, and companies they've submitted reviews for. Now, taken together, this information can help you identify segments of students who might be interested in PIT opportunities. Handshake's analytics tools make it really easy to dig into all of that data and see how it intersects. So you could be looking at institutional data um, alongside student interest data. You could be looking at you know, the student interest data against student action data. And this really allows you to understand the profile of a student that might be a good fit for these types of opportunities. Here's an example on the slide. This report shows you the percentage of students interested in specific fields, and it's broken down by college. Um, so you can imagine similar types of reports that you might run to understand where pockets of interested students live um, based on the attributes of a PIT employer or opportunity. And in Handshake, you can build your own custom reports or you can use pre-built templates that Handshake has curated to help get you started. And overall, our analytics tools make it easy to slice and dice information and uncover trends about which types of students are interested in PIT jobs. Once you understand the types of students that you'd like to promote pit jobs to, you can start labeling in them in Handshake so that they are easily referenceable as a group. Um, and labeling can happen in a couple of different ways. So if you have external lists of students, say you have a list of students that participated in an event last year that uh, was pit related, you can import a label onto their Handshake accounts via a really simple upload and then you would be able to really easily reference that list of students um, in Handshake. You can also use the data points that we've talked about, whether it's major or um, uh, application submissions or school year, to create a custom list of students in Handshake and then label them as well. So the idea here is that you could use different data points, whether they are internal to Handshake or external, to identify a group of students that you want to work with moving forward. And by labeling these students, you allow them to re you allow yourself to reference them um, in other areas of Handshake. So, for example, you could take your custom list of labeled students and run an even more detailed analysis on them um, in our analytics platform. Or you could use that labeled list of students to define the recipient list for a newsletter or an email campaign, or um, invite them to events that you host in Handshake. So next, I'm going to pass it over to Chelsea to talk about um, identifying employers. Thank you, Brett. So similar to the ways that you can use Handshake to pinpoint and support students, you can also use the platform to manage your work with employers. So we have excellent analytics, as Britt was just telling you about, that allow you to provide overviews into employer activity as well. So as you can see here on the screen, we have our Who's Hiring dashboard, and this allows you to view jobs that have recently been posted, view active industries for your university, and pinpoint the trends in job postings. We also have a newly launched employer messaging dashboard that gives you a comprehensive picture of employer engagement on Handshake. You can say, see which companies are messaging your students and which types of students are seeing the most engagement. So all of this information together can be valuable to review and help you identify the employers and jobs that already align with your public interest technology goals. After reviewing that data, you can then dive in and actually get to work with some of the employers that you want to identify. So you can use Handshake to identify key employers that are aligned with your values and share opportunities with students. 
in Handshake, the university can decide which employers and jobs to approve. So in your university's account, you likely have hundreds or even thousands of approved employers already that you can filter through to see what would be a good fit. You can filter by industry, by the name of known employers that you already see as a pit aligned, and you can also use keywords, company size, and more. After reviewing those approved employers, you can also find new employers with our Find Employers tool. And you can locate employers that may, you may have a relationship with outside of Handshake and you want to add them in. And you can let them know how they can actually share uh, opportunities via Handshake to students. Once you've isolated these employers, similar to what Britt was talking about too, labeling is the thing. You can label those employers so that you can easily email them and invite them to events and fairs. So thinking about this, as you've identified those public interest technology employers, you can then build your relationship with them and facilitate their engagement with qualified and interested students. You can ask them to host panels or join Ask Me Anything events and info sessions where you have a few select employers speak to those interested students. You can promote these events to specific subsets of students. And we've found that virtual info sessions and thoughtful chances to interact with those students can actually make a big difference when it comes to what jobs students are thinking about applying to. You can also leverage Handshake's new virtual fair tool, which has reimagined a typical career fair and given students and employers a new meaningful way to engage. With our virtual fair tool, you can invite targeted employers and specific student groups and then those students have a chance to speak with employers either one-on-one -on -one or in group sessions with our integrated video platform. There's a little image of that there on the screen. Now you can host these fairs at your own institution or you can actually partner with other Pitt uh, universities. And this is a great way to collaborate, to bring aboard a variety of employers and facilitate those high quality conversations for students and recruiters. After the fair, you also will have quick downloads and pre-built reports that show you in-depth data to inform your work. Next. Next. So not only can you pinpoint employers that align to your values, but you can also locate specific jobs and internships as well. On our jobs page, you can again use our advanced filters to target specific opportunities. You can filter for jobs posted by a pit employer that you've already labeled or you can isolate by industry or major and among many others. Once you've selected those jobs, you can add public labels to them so that students are able to see them when they're doing their own searching. So when students log into Handshake, they can filter and they can find all the jobs that you have pre-created and curated for them and apply directly. So, after you've set all this up and they're starting to do all this work, you can also continue marketing and you can send it directly to students. So, oh, one prior. Thanks. If you can go back one slide, but that's okay. Uh, marketing pit opportunities to students, you can actually take, if you go one back, um, we're talking about how you can actually take these jobs and opportunities, thank you, um, and directly message them to students. So with Handshake's email messaging tool, you can craft targeted emails that advertise specific jobs and events, and you can send them to those students. We have a variety of engaging pre-built templates that you can use. So creating emails is very easy to do and engaging for students to read. And when you send these emails, you can use the labels that Britt mentioned earlier to define a custom set of recipients so that the opportunities being sent are being sent to the students that would be interested in them. You can also share jobs with students via, our, via RSS feeds, tongue twister. And once you set that feed up on your own, you can actually embed active jobs on websites so students can see them outside of Handshake as well. So those are a few ways that we've talked about very quickly here that you can leverage Handshake to support your public interest technology goals. And since many of your universities are already actively using Handshake, we hope you can easily get started. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Britt to talk about the next steps. Awesome, thanks Chel. So now before we take your questions, we just wanted to quickly recap um, all of the ways that you can take action and use Handshake to connect students with PIT jobs. Nice short list for you. First and foremost, um, we wanna encourage you all, um, if you aren't already a part of the Career Center, to get in touch with your Career Center colleagues. They are the primary administrators of your Handshake account and will likely have rules or process around granting administrative access to Handshake. 
You'll want to work with them to understand how you might gain access to the platform and or plug into some of their existing workflows. And they uh, will more than likely have a lot of great insights to share with you about connecting with students and using the platform. Next, as you start to get comfortable with Handshake and diving into the data that's available to schools, make sure that you all come together as a group, as Pitt UN, to talk about how you're identifying relevant students and jobs in Handshake. Now, while each uh, school's student body is unique, we found that our partner schools collectively make each other smarter and more efficient by sharing best practices. Um, our community forums on Handshake are really lively and great places where schools come together to share what they're learning, share challenges that they're facing, um, and get ideas from, from others. So we recommend doing that um, for pit opportunities as well. Um, an easy one, definitely use some of the methods we suggested to you today. Um, in order to find and market pit opportunities to relevant students. I wanna add a really um, extra strong plug for our virtual career fair tool, which just launched over the summer. Um, we've hosted, oh, in the fall, we're gonna have hosted 2,300 virtual fairs um, and fostering 1 million student employer connections. It's a really robust and fantastic tool that you can use to host events across multiple schools. Um, so really recommend digging in there and. Uh, Chelsea and I will be happy to talk more about that too during Q&A. Um, and so that's uh, the second to last bullet point, actually co-host multi-school events together. Um, and then finally, share insights and best practices with one another, um, continue growing, and um, definitely in partnering with your career center, um, share those learnings with them too. And that's all we had for you today. So now um, we are going to take some time to answer questions. Um, so please, if you were rapidly listening to us speak, feel free to um, submit some questions now. We're going to be around for a little bit, and we are happy to answer them. And I um, want to thank you all for attending today and hope you found this informative and helpful. We'll just take a moment. Um, again, please feel free to submit questions. We ha haven't seen any come through just yet, so don't be shy. We're happy to respond. Awesome. Excellent. So um, we had a question come in. Looks like this is being recorded. Will it be available to share with our Career Services Center? Um, Andreen, I might actually tap you in to answer that question. Do you happen to know that one? I believe we'll be sharing the recording out. Yes? She gave me a nod. Okay, perfect. Yes. So we will have a recording for you after the fact and definitely recommend sharing it with your um, Career Center. Good question. We had another one come in that says, can you talk about how schools might partner with each other in, um, in using Handshake to promote pit opportunities? Chelsea, do you want to um, kind of like share what you think uh, the best recommendation we have is? We talked through a couple in today's uh, presentation, but what's your favorite? Well, of course, I'm going to mention the virtual fair tool. Um, so that's really a great way right now to connect with one another and share. Um, it broadens your horizons with employers as well. So you might have certain employers that often you interact with, and then other universities have their own set of employers. When you combine your forces together to host these virtual fairs, you're able to broaden those horizons. So more employers can come. Students have the opportunity to talk with many different employers. And we've heard only positive feedback right now from students who say the conversations are extremely meaningful and better than sometimes that in-person piece where you're like, oh, hello, goodbye. You actually get 10 minutes to really talk through your question, to learn about what it's like to actually be part of that company. So um, that is my favorite at the moment. Britt, anything to add? Yeah, I would just say that um, to, to give you a little bit of background on the structure of virtual fairs, the way that we went about building this set of features was to think about an in-person fair, what the value is that students and employers and schools get out of them. Um, and then also look at some of the inefficiencies and think about how we might solve those in a virtual context. So Chelsea alluded to the fact that 
um, students, when they are attending a virtual fair on Handshake, actually have the option to pre-register for one-on-one -on -one or group sessions with employers. So they can have their day planned out weeks in advance. Um, and they don't have to show up to a sweaty gym and nervously look around for which place has, uh, you know, a short line or the nicest pens. Um, you can really do your research ahead of time and know exactly when and where you need to show up. And uh, as she mentioned, we've gotten a lot of great feedback on that too. Another thing I'll mention about virtual fairs is that our research with students and employers has shown that um, niche fairs or fairs that focus on a very particular um, type of opportunity or industry like PIT um, tend to fare the best. They get the best feedback. Students feel the most engaged by them. So there's a really good opportunity here to, um, to engage students and um, help them make meaningful connections. Okay, next question. Can PIT employers be directed to the member PIT UN schools so that they can connect on Handshake? Um, this is a really good question. I, I can take this one. So each school on Handshake um, can, they, they have access to a unique link that you can share with an employer. Um, and if the employer clicks that link, it'll have them sign up for an account and then automatically approve them at your school. So yes, each uh, PIT UN school could use that feature to really easily um, get employers to connect with you. There's a good chance that a lot of them are already on Handshake. So they might already be connected with you as well. But if they are net new, if your school doesn't, um, hasn't connected with them already, then it's super simple to do that. Um, and that link is a really great way to, to do it as well because you can just pop it into an email. Okay, we got another good question. Can you talk a bit more about the process of labeling employers? Chelsea, do you wanna talk about that one? Sure. So when you log into Handshake, there's a page that says employers. So you can go to that employer page and there are a number of filters down the side. Um, you also have the ability to create labels. So labels can be done in the moment or they can be done you know, with your PIT UN folks if you want to align on the types of labels you use together. But on that employer page, you can start to filter through and say, I'm looking for an employer uh, that is from this industry and in nonprofit sector, um, or you can put in a keyword. And once you get a list of those employers, you can start to select them. And then there's a way that you say, just simply add label. You can add that label to it and say, I'm adding the label PIT UN. And then once that label is there, it is going to stay on that employer. So anytime you filter for that label and say, I'm looking for my PIT UN uh, employers, all of those employers will pop up and then you can do any number of actions. So you can email those employers, you can um, on the jobs page, find jobs that are connected with those employers and you can invite them to events, to take part in fairs uh, and so on. And if you in the audience have more questions about how that works too, um, feel free to add another question in and we can get even nitty gritty, grittier with it. Um, but also um, if you talk with your career services team, they're gonna be experts at this as well. And so you can ask them what labels they already use and if you can start to add the label of PIT to that uh, group as well for your Handshake account. Excellent. Awesome, another really fantastic question. Are you able to identify popular skills that students need to have for PIT employers? Um, you absolutely are in Handshake, and this is also a really interesting area of research that we are thinking about right now. Um, I'll talk about how you can do it in Handshake right now, and then we can talk about sort of what the future might look like for, or, or what we're investigating. So um, as a part of the Handshake profile, students are able to uh, list out skills. Um, and those are queryable, searchable by um, employers. So they could be searching for students based on a certain set of skills. Um, but for the purposes of this question, what you might wanna do is look at students who have applied for um, PIT opportunities or who have gotten interviews for PIT opportunities or who have been hired for PIT jobs um, and then kind of back into the skills that they have listed on their profile. And that would give you a really interesting way to then go and search for new students that list the same skills um, and target them with PIT opportunities. But again, I would really look at the students who have taken that final action of applying for a job or interviewing for a job, which is available in Handshake, and, um, and then looking at the similarities in the skill sets that they list on their profile to identify the top ones. And then when it comes to the future, um, Handshake is trying to think about ways that we might help students um, 
better articulate their skills and even assess some of them as well. So um, this is nothing short term that's coming, but uh, we are really interested in how skills um, can act as a way to move past major as the defining um, element of a, of a student's repertoire and speak to their broader set of interests um, and experiences and, and, and thus um, help them be more qualified for more opportunities. So um, we're really invested in that. And I think that's going to come to fruition in a lot of cool ways over the next couple of years. Chelsea, anything you'd add to that? That is perfect. Um, here's a good question. What industry would be appropriate for pits? Um, I've actually been doing a little bit of thinking about this and, you know, pits opportunities can, could probably come in a variety of different um, forms, but, uh, and we have a standard list of industries on Handshake that we, um, that you can check out in our help center that um, I would recommend just perusing, but a couple that I thought of initially, I mean, there is a, um, an internet and technology um, industry, also nonprofits, um, governments. So there are, are a lot of industries that you would typically expect. And, you know, as you all have been having conversations with each other, I'm sure these keywords have already come up that you could find in Handshake. Um, but those are just a couple of examples uh, that I would say you could get started with in trying to identify uh, these types of employers. Okay. Another good question. Is there a way for students to save micro credentials or pit related achievements in their profiles on Handshake? Um, Chelsea, I, I wanna pass this one over to you. Do you wanna talk about um, the ability to include projects in Handshake? I think that could be a cool way to do it. Sure. I actually might throw that back to you. I was um, initially thinking about the My Journey section as one area that they could oh, yeah. add to. Um, but when I was thinking about this, so there's the handshake profile for students. They have a lot of opportunities to add things and customize it. We really want it to be a living page for them and to be a place that can both be seen as a resume, but also something that's dynamic and growing all the time. Um, so there's a section that says my journey, which is a great way for them to kind of talk about the things that are important to them, the interests that they have, and it kind of helps them stand out more than just what their GPA says, as Britt was mentioning. We're trying to get away from just those criteria to also let them become more of a person. Um, so I think they could talk about that there as well, but Britt would love to hear your thoughts on the projects too. Yeah, totally. So projects is just another element of a student's profile that would allow them to link off to an external, whether it's website or folder of documents to um, perhaps share a, a project they worked on or an achievement that they uh, an achievement that they achieved. So that would be another great way to show it off. And I would actually go back to skills as well. If it's something like, um, you know, being able to code in Ruby and that being a valuable skill that you want to highlight, Throwing that into your skills section is a great way to show that off as well. Um, and again, because we're thinking about skills kind of in a more long-term basis, um, there will hopefully be, you know, really cool updates again in the coming years about how we can um, make that an even more robust um, way to show off uh, what you know and, and know what your experience is. Okay, next question. Can career services offices create skills for students to choose for their profile? This is a good question. So right now, career services um, is not able to define a set list of skills. We actually let students um, enter text in there on their own. We do, um, we do a little bit of data cleanup on the back end so that we can merge together uh, similar types of skills that have been expressed differently, uh, whether it's you know, said in different words or spelled differently. Um, and we also have a type ahead functionality in the, uh, when you're entering a skill so that we look to standardize that a little bit. But we really want students to be able to um, not be limited by like a, an existing list of skills and um, list it in, in the way that makes the most sense for them so that they can kind of like authentically share uh, what their skill set is. It's a really good question. 
So another one we see here is, can you describe how students have been responding to virtual career fairs? So um, I talked about this a little bit, but just in general, we're hearing great things from students who are seeing it as a way that they can, one, do a little preparation and feel more confident going into those conversations with employers. So whether they're gonna be having those one-on-ones or if they're not ready to have a one-on-one -on -one session yet, they also have the opportunity to listen in a group setting. So they can go to those group sessions that hold up to 50 students. And that's usually more of like a panel where the employers are talking through things, maybe doing a brief presentation. And so that's a great way for students who want to dip their toe in and learn a little bit. So in that way, it's great for both sides. You can engage actively or you can start to learn um, and listen before asking questions. Uh, we've also heard from students that they are enjoying being able to do this from their phone, from their computer, and it's very intuitive and easy to get started. So all of that is um, exciting because that's what exactly what we wanted to do for them. Uh, and we are also continuing to take feedback right now. This was our first launch this fall, responding to the needs that we saw from everyone. Um, and the great thing about Handshake is we really listen to feedback. So we're hearing what employers are saying, we're hearing what universities and students are saying, and we're gonna continue iterating and making changes based on the feedback that we see. Uh, Britt, anything else to add to that? No, I think you said it perfectly. Awesome. Okay. So um, here is another good question. Can students access their profile beyond graduation or if they have gaps in their education? This is a really good question. And ultimately, it's the school's decision um, whether to continue offering um, services through Handshake to students who are um, maybe taking sabbatical or uh, who have graduated and are alumni now. I would say that the vast majority of schools on Handshake do allow alumni to continue using Handshake in some capacity. Because Handshake can be used to host in-person events or um, facilitate appointments with career center um, advisors, some schools will choose to turn that functionality off for alumni because they're likely no longer on campus, far away, um, or they don't have the capacity to serve their alumni population, but they will continue allowing them to um, use Handshake to look for virtual events um, or to you know, search for and apply for jobs as well. Um, that's not to say that all turn off that functionality. Some um, support alumni for life, which is also a really fabulous thing to be able to provide. Um, and for gaps in education, some schools will choose to deactivate a student's account until they are an active student again. But again, it, it really comes down to the institution and what their policies look like on that front. Awesome. So the next question was, would Handshake consider adding public interest technology as an, in, as an industry, which is an interesting question. Um, I would say, you know, never say never, but at this time we do have a concrete set of industries um, and we really thrive on the labels piece as a way to be more dynamic. We don't want to pigeonhole you into a specific sector and say only these types of employers would be pit um, employers. We want it to be a bit more um, all encompassing because as you grow and as you find new employers and as you're looking for opportunities, um, I think the labeling piece gives you more flexibility in the end to choose those folks um, rather than letting someone else self-identify or us automatically labeling for you. Uh, but Britt, interested in your thoughts there too. No, that's a really great point. Labeling does give you a lot more flexibility. Um, and because I think these types of opportunities are going to span different industries, um, it's a really, it, it kind of behooves you to, to, to take that custom approach so that nothing slips through the cracks. And again, though, I will say, you know, tell us at the beginning, never say never. We do reassess our list of industries and it's based on a um, variety of different external factors where we, where we kind of build that list off of. Um, so it is, it is something that evolves over time. Um, but not something we change lightly just because it has implications in the system, um, whether it's, you know, employers suddenly having to um, change their profile settings or their jobs. Um, it, we do have to be really thoughtful about implementing changes. Um, here's a good question. Is Handshake available to every student? Does your school have to have a Handshake account? Um, I can take this one. So last year, we actually uh, launched what we call Handshake Open, which allowed any student um, from a four-year institution in the U.S. to sign up for a Handshake account. Now, if your school doesn't partner with Handshake, 
your um, access to features is a little bit more limited. So uh, the primary uh, mechanism for jobs uh, being visible to students is that they are posted to specific schools and then that school approves or declines them. If the school doesn't partner with Handshake, then employers can post jobs directly to students, um, but they have to intentionally choose to uh, target those schools. So if the career center isn't involved, um, there's a little bit less of that kind of administrative structure in place. So um, there, are, there are not as many opportunities for students uh, that go to schools that don't partner with Handshake, but there are still plenty. So yes, it is available to everybody, but um, the administrative tools that career services have access to um, are, of course, they're just not a part of the picture in that case. One great thing, though, too, is um, even if there is a university that is not a partner with us, when you host those collaborative virtual fairs, for example, you can actually make that visible to students who are even part of the Handshake Open Network. So those students could still discover and attend that fair, even though their career services team is not actually a partner with us. So we do try to make those opportunities open. So uh, that would be an option for you guys, too. That is such a good point, Chelsea. Thank you for bringing that up. Of course. Um, another um, question. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna. I was gonna. Can we do the one about um, like a tip to use the handshake network more effectively? Go. Because I have a good. One. Yeah, go for it. Cool. So um, one really uh, one of my favorite aspects of handshake is the ability for students to leave a review of an employer. So let's say they had a summer internship in the fall. We'll send them a survey to collect information on what they thought about it. Um, and it's not just what they liked, what they didn't like, and um, advice they would give to a future student. They can also share information about um, whether the, uh, if they think the employer does a good job of supporting uh, certain types of groups, whether it's um, black employees or LGBTQ employees or women employees. Um, they can share information about work-life balance. They can share information about perks. And that information is all then visible to other students on the network. So it's a really powerful tool for a student who is eager to learn more about company culture um, when they are looking for opportunities to apply to. But um, as administrators in Handshake, you can also see all the reviews that your students have submitted. And it's a great way to inform the relationships that you have with employers, whether it's, um, you know, you see a lot of glowing reviews come in about an employer that you don't work that closely with, that could prompt you to then um, form a bigger partnership with them, or you might notice a trend about the type of student that's reviewing um, a particular employer, and that could be another piece of information that you use to identify future students that might be interested. So um, reviews are really, um, they're actually helpful for all three sides. Employers really like them too, because they allow the, they allow the employer to show transparency um, employers can also respond to them so they can um, kind of like, you know, accept feedback when it's given or thank students for sharing their thoughts. So, um, yeah, collectively, it's just been a really powerful feature that's um, given a lot more transparency to, um, yeah, what it's like to work at different, at different uh, employers. Chelsea, anything you would add? I think that's great. I know we only have a few minutes left, so um, uh, let's see if there's one more. Anything that you see, Brett, that we want to call out there? We can quickly answer the question, do you have options for high school students? Right now, we do not. So we serve um, four-year institutions in the U.S., and we just started working with community and technical colleges as well, which has been really fabulous. Um, and we are expanding into the U.K. as well. But um, we do not have options for high school students right now. Um, quickly, how to engage employers um, and increase the number on your site. I think, you know, not to plug virtual fairs again, but that is a great way because if you're joining with your um, cohort there, some employers might be attending that you don't already have connections with. So you can kind of take notice of that, see which of your students are interested in those employers, and then reach out to those employers and ask them to, to be approved at your uh, university. So that's one way. Uh, we also have a find employers part of the employer section. So you can search for employers that you already know about that you would like to approve. And you can also do some proactive searching there as well. Um, and then again, throughout your time together, if you're hearing from peers or you can talk to other universities, you're like, oh, we love this employer. They do a great job with our students. Then you can have just go in, type in that employer's name and um, seek to connect with them. 
All right. Well, thank you all so much. This has been a wonderful opportunity for us. We hope this was helpful for you. And if you have additional questions, um, Andreen is happy to connect with us and, and tell us about it. And we hope to continue to support you in your pit goals. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much, everyone, for attending and having us. And have a wonderful Thursday.